Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here, and today we are tackling a kitchen conundrum that you have written in about, and that is how to avoid a soggy crust when making a tart or a pie. Well, today I'm gonna share with you a foolproof recipe for a flaky pie crust that's light, tender, and you will not have a soggy bottom in the end. So, let's get started. All right, so today I'm using a food processor here to make the pie crust. If you didn't have a food processor, you could certainly do this by hand, but a food processor really makes short work of this whole process. And if you're a serious baker, you wanna become a serious baker, you should really invest in one of these appliances. So I have two cups of all-purpose flour right into the bowl of my food processor here. Simple, all-purpose flour. You don't need cake, you don't need bread, nothing special about this, just regular all-purpose flour a teaspoon of granulated sugar, three quarters of a teaspoon of coarse salt, and then I'm just gonna take the top and I'm gonna whiz this together so that the salt and the sugar get evenly dispersed with the flour. Just like that, that's all you really need. Now to this I'm gonna add one stick of unsalted butter that's been cut into very small cubes, and this is really, really cold. You wanna make sure when you're making pie crust, when you're making scones, when you're making biscuits, anything that you want to have a flaky texture, you wanna make sure that your butter is well chilled so it stays in nice little pieces before it goes into the oven and steams to create those flaky layers. So process this up until the mixture resembles a coarse kind of meal, almost like oatmeal in a way. All right, so as you can see, we have some larger size pieces of butter that remain, but there are a lot of fine pieces. And this is really what you're looking for at this stage of making the dough. Now, to this mixture, I'm going to add some ice water. This is kind of a hybrid version for us of a classic pie dough that we call pat brise with a few extra components or ingredients or tweaks, I'll say, to that recipe that make it nice and sturdy. So I need about two to three tablespoons of icy cold water, which I'm gonna put right into this bowl here. And an ingredient that we don't typically add to our basic pie dough is an egg. But I'm adding an egg here because it's going to, again, add a little bit of structure to our dough, which in the end will be really nice for our tart that we're making. By the way, I haven't even told you guys what we're making today, but we're making a savory tomato tart, which is really delicious. But this crust can be used in sweet applications, savory applications. It would be a really great crust for a quiche. And this strength, and structure that the egg will provide is perfect for the tomato tart that we're making today. So water egg goes into the bowl of the food processor here. And you wanna be pretty quick here. Put the top on and pulse this again until the dough just starts to come together. All right, so as you can see, there are nice clumps in the food processor, this flour mixture, and a way to tell whether or not your dough has come together enough and that you've processed it enough is to take a small handful of the dough, put it in your palm, and give it a good squeeze. And if it holds together in its shape, that means that you're ready to go, this will be perfect, and you're gonna form it into a disc. If it falls apart on you and crumbles back together, that means that you need a little bit more water. So add a tablespoon at a time until you achieve this consistency. All right, so now I'm just going to move my food processor out of the way and take a piece of plastic wrap, turn your dough out onto the plastic wrap, and then using the plastic wrap itself, to your advantage, pick it up from the sides and with your fists, you're gonna compress the dough into a nice compact shape. And this will take a few kind of pushes here. You really just want it to just come together and you can see it's starting to take on a shape of a disc, which is what we're looking for because today we're gonna use an 11 inch tart pan. So we want this to be nice and round. So fold up the plastic wrap nice and evenly. And then what I like to do, and a lot of people don't really do this, but this is my little tip here. I like to take 
my rolling pin. And I like to roll the dough in the plastic a little bit before I put this in the refrigerator to chill it. And what this does is it squeezes the dough, it pushes it together against the edge of the plastic wrap and it really compresses it together. And what it does is it prevents cracks from forming, which in the end, when you go to roll this out into a nice big disc, it will prevent those cracks from becoming even bigger and splitting on you when you're rolling this out. So. This looks good into the refrigerator for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half until it's nice and firm. And this just allows the dough to relax a little bit before we roll it out. So, refrigerator. So now, to roll out our dough, flour your work surface. And be generous with the amount of flour that you're using because you don't want your dough to stick. Take your chilled disc of dough, place it right on your work surface, a little bit of flour over the top, you can even flour your rolling pin if you'd like. And I'm gonna roll this out until the dough is about an eighth of an inch in thickness. And that will be perfect for this 11 inch tart pan. So whenever you're rolling pastry, you wanna make sure that you're rotating the dough as you roll it. I like to tell people that I apply pressure in one direction on the rolling pin, and then when I come back towards myself, I release the pressure. This will ensure that you get a nice even thickness so this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna use my tart pan as a guide to see if I've rolled it out enough. You wanna make sure that you're giving yourself a couple of inches on each side so that when you do put the dough in the pan, you have enough room for the dough to come up on the sides of the fluted edge. So this looks pretty good. And an easy way to put your dough inside of your tart pan is to roll it up right on your rolling pin. If you have any excess flour, you can gently wipe it off with your hand or a pastry brush. And then just unfurl the dough right into the pan. Take the dough, work it into the corners of the pan. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm making a tart like this, something that's not gonna necessarily have a top crust to it and you want that sturdy edge, you can take the dough and you can kind of fold it over itself like this. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a double layer of dough, which will give you a really solid edge, which is nice because it will hold all of those wonderful fillings. And when you go to slice into this tart, the edge won't break off on you when you go to cut into it. So it, it is a nice way to create a sturdy, sturdy crust. So fold over just like this, really press the dough into the edge of the fluted pan so that it retains that nice shape during baking. And then to trim the edge, all of this excess dough, you could do one of two things. You can use a knife, you could even use your finger to just kind of swipe the dough on the sharp edge of the pan and it cuts off nicely. You could use a knife to do that as well. Or you could use a rolling pin and all you need to do is roll on top of the crust and you can see that it creates a nice edge right there. So any of those three methods will work. The rolling pin is pretty fast. So now this goes into the refrigerator until it's nice and icy cold. Again, we want this to firm up so that those little pieces of butter that are intermixed in the dough get nice and hard because when we put this in the oven, we want them to puff up and create flaky layers. So chill until really firm. Our tart shell has been in the refrigerator Take the tines of a fork and gently pierce the bottom of the tart crust here. And this is just to prevent any kind of uneven bubbling up of the crust while it's baking so that it rises evenly. And now take a piece of parchment. I like to crinkle it up. And this is a process now of blind baking. So blind baking, this is the best way in ensuring that you have a nice crisp crust to avoid that soggy bottom. And that is pre-baking your shell before you add other ingredients to it. So line with your parchment paper and then using some baking beans or pie weights, fill the crust. So fill with the baking beans, smooth them out to the edges. And this goes into a 375 degree oven. And you want to blind bake your crust until it's nice and set. It's not wet or soggy. Even check the underside in the center to make sure that this part isn't wet before removing the parchment and the beans and cooking it even longer until it's nice and golden brown and crisp. So 
That first part will take anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes, and then removing the pie weights, it will take about 10 to 15 minutes more. So into the oven. All right, so our tart shell is out of the oven. It's cooled completely. Today I'm using a delicious combination of roasted tomatoes. I have some roasted garlic here, which is so wonderful and sweet when it's roasted. A Little bit of thyme and cheese. So two cloves of garlic that I've roasted off here, I'm going to squeeze into a small bowl and create a bit of a paste that I'm gonna put on the bottom of this crust. It's gonna add fantastic flavor. So now I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of oil to my garlic here. And then using a spoon, just work this into a nice paste. And this cooked garlic paste is so fantastic in so many different things. Tossed with pasta it would be really great. I only need a portion of this for this recipe and just smooth it along the bottom of the crust. You want a really thin layer. And then the good stuff, a little bit of cheese. Now, for this recipe, I'm using an Alpine cheese, like a Gruyere cheese would be really fantastic here, but you could certainly use a Fontina cheese. That would be wonderful. If you didn't have access to those cheeses and you had access to cheddar, an aged cheddar would be really great as well. So a thin layer of cheese on the bottom of the tart shell, and then I'm gonna fill this with wonderful oven roasted tomatoes. And I'm using tomatoes here today, but you could use, you know, any roasted vegetable that you love. I think roasted onions would create a really delicious tart or leeks. Fennel would be fantastic, mushrooms. The thing that you just need to remember when you're making a savory tart like this is that you want to pre-cook the vegetables so that a lot of the moisture is gone so that you don't end up with a soggy bottom on your crust. So since these tomatoes have been cooked and a lot of the moisture has leached out of them and concentrated the flavor, they're gonna end up being super delicious in this tart. So I started with about six pounds of tomatoes in an oven with olive oil, salt, and pepper. You could certainly add flavorings if you wanted to add more garlic there, that would be fantastic. Chili flakes or herbs to lend some fantastic flavor, but just pile these into the tart shell here. And this is so beautiful, you guys. Put one right in the center. And then a little bit of thyme. So this is six to eight sprigs of thyme that I've taken the leaves off of. Scatter that over the top. And thyme and tomatoes go really well together. Some salt and pepper. and then the rest of that cheese right over the top. And this is going into a 350 degree oven until the cheese has melted and the tomatoes have been warmed through. And you know, this whole filling is kind of cohesive, should bubble slightly, and that will take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. But I mean, this looks so good just as is. I can't even wait to try this, but I tell you, it's gonna be even better when it goes into the oven. All right, guys, the tart is out of the oven and it's cooled a little bit. It's still warm. And I wanna show you how to unmold this tart from the pan. So make sure you're using towels because it is still a little bit warm. And the beauty of using one of these removable bottom tart pans is that you can easily pop the ring off. Look at that, beautiful. And you're ready to serve this up. I'm gonna take it right off of the base. And you could serve this room temperature totally fine, but it's really nice when it's warm too because the cheese is nice and melty and gooey. And I'm using one of my favorite knives. This is an offset serrated knife here, guys. This is the perfect knife for cutting wedges of cake, slices of pie, or beautiful tarts like this. Oh my gosh. The tomatoes are still really juicy and moist, but that bottom crust is really crisp and fully baked. This really is a fantastic recipe, not only the crust, but the tomato tart itself. Now, as always, if you have any kitchen conundrums, any baking conundrums, whatever they might be, please reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrums. We love to hear from you and 
We love to see if you guys are making our recipes, so let us know. Enjoy, guys. So delicious. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.